This week's Farm Basics is brought to you by SatShot.com. Satellites aren't just for NASA anymore. Use the power of satellite imagery to create variable rate management zones in your fields. To reduce input costs and increase yields on your farm, go to SatShot.com. As we get later into the season, one of the considerations that farmers have when they're still spraying for insects and weeds and diseases out in fields is something called the pre-harvest interval. What that means is when you can spray a pesticide and the amount of time that you need before harvest. So in other words, if there's a pre-harvest interval of 21 days with a particular pesticide, you have to spray that pesticide at least 21 days prior to harvest or more. Well, I know there's a lot of fear out there about certain pesticides on the market and you say, man, I don't know if this is safe to spray on before something that we're going to save for food, like in a garden, for example. Well, that's the great thing about our country is that, that the government does require a lot of testing with all the pesticides. And one of the things that they test for is looking for residues that may carry over in the crop. So you spray something on your sweet corn, for example. How long is it until I can harvest that sweet corn and eat it safely? Well, the government does multiple years of testing and literally chemical companies spend millions and millions of dollars paying for all this testing to prove exactly how long those residues will last in food. Yeah, but the interesting thing I think about this whole deal is, let me just give you a quick example. If you were to spray something like Warrior, which is an insecticide, and you spray that right on the tomatoes in your garden, you could actually eat those tomatoes the next day. But if we spray it out in our soybean field, we can't harvest it for 21 or 28 days. I mean, that number has varied over the years. It actually, at one time, I believe was 45 days. How can a pre-harvest interval change from 45 days to 21 days? How can it only be 24 hours on another crop and it's 21 days on, on a different crop? Well, I don't doubt that there are certain differences crop to crop in how long that may stay around. For example, if one crop had a very hard shell, maybe that that pesticide would never ever penetrate through it anyway, so there wouldn't be much of a distance in time between when you spray it and when you could harvest it. However, uh, when it comes down to all these tests to prove the safety, chemical companies can only spend so much money. And if they've got a crop like soybeans and they say, look, nobody's spraying within 21 days of harvest anyway, there's no need for us to prove that we could really be out there two days before harvest. They just won't spend the money to prove that very narrow time window. But they say, you know what? I really do need to have at least 21 days because it is reasonable that someone might be spraying 21 days before harvest. We better prove that and spend the money. Tomatoes, heck, they may get harvested anytime. So you do need to prove a one or two day safety window if that's what your product can yeah. actually deliver. So I guess the big thing here is make sure that you read the label, whether you're a farmer or a non-farmer with just a garden out there, make sure you read the label and know what that pre-harvest interval is. The other thing to understand is that sometimes even though the pre-harvest interval may say 21 days, you could spray it and you could eat it almost immediately and no harm would come to you, but it's not labeled because the chemical company just didn't want to spend that much money getting that product labeled and that pre-harvest interval done. Now there's one other quick thing we should tell you and that's the IR4 program. Well, as I mentioned, it does cost millions and millions of dollars to get these products labeled for various crops. Now if you had a crop that was only raised on a few hundred acres in the whole country, uh, for a company to spend millions of dollars to prove its safety, it's just never going to be commercially worth it. So there's a program called the IR4 program that's run through land grant universities where they can find minor use crops and actually do the testing at the universities so the chemical company doesn't have to spend millions of dollars and the benefit for us the consumer or the producer is that they can get labeled products in their crop even though there aren't very many acres of the crop. Well, once again, pre-harvest intervals are an important thing that you always want to take a look at. But another important thing on farms is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 